You heard the Hamilton music. We're in the Sound Lounge, which is the beautiful little theater studio across the hall from our uh, regular NBC Tower studio. And we're here because in just a moment, uh, we are going to bring out Miguel Cervantes, the star of Broadway in Chicago's Hamilton. And uh, you will hear proof that there is actually an audience for our <laughs> show today. <laughs> I'm loving this. I love a live audience. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for so many of you who are writing to us constantly. You join us on Facebook Live from our house. You send us texts. And uh, I, many of you tell us that you didn't even know where we were until recently. We we came here in January of this year. And we're so happy that you finally found us. Thank you very much for coming in. And now. This is what you guys are really here for. Uh, let's bring out the star of Broadway in Chicago's Hamilton. He's going to talk with us. He's got some music to perform. Let's welcome Miguel Cervantes. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How you doing? Miguel, Hi, Miguel. Uh, Pete, your fans, oh, look, look, look they, have, they have posters. They're holding up <laughs> pictures and is, posters. Hamilton is my Jamilton. <laughs> Come on. That's awesome. That is great. Miguel, you were here with us uh, a few weeks ago, and we just didn't even have enough time to talk to you because we were so impressed. We thought we were just getting the star of Hamilton. You know, who knew he was going to talk about Hamilton? And then it turns out that you have so much more to say, and you're involved in a really wonderful cause, and we love everything about you and your family. Well, thank you. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it, this Hamilton experience is it's such an unbelievable um, opportunity as an actor, as a performer, as a, you know, as a person in the arts, to be part of something that's so unbelievable in, in, in changing the game. But on the other side of that is the platform that I have to try to make a difference in, in one way or another, you know, the, the deeper meaning of all this um, became apparent, you know, very clear when, when my daughter was diagnosed with epilepsy, right, at the same time this was all happening, and I thought, what better way to use this, this, um, this soapbox that I have to sort of raise some awareness and do something great. And uh, before we talk more about <clears throat> your personal journey with your family and the original song you've come up with in connection with that, how many times have you uh, performed the role of Hamilton now? Well, interestingly enough, last night we had a party, and that was our one-year anniversary. We've been here for one solid wow. year, first performance. Um, so I think, I'm not sure the exact number, but it's somewhere around just under 400 times um, here in Chicago. How, how different is each performance? It's it's it, it, it's it's actually it changes from day to day. You know the audiences are, are are slightly different. The responses are different. Sometimes it's rock concert. Sometimes it's a little more subdued. And we feed off of that, and the show becomes it breathes with that. And and then you know Chris Lee, who plays Lafayette Jefferson, and I, we like to sort of um, play around in the cabinet battles, and we sort of you know we we change it enough to make it really interesting. And and we've had four Aaron Burrs now, so, so uh, it, the, the, that changes the dynamic on stage just inherently when there's new people, there's new energy, so it, 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 it's a different show every time, you know, I feel energized every time we go out there. Four Aaron Burrs be, because the Aaron Burrs keep getting shot in that, duels. You know, every once in a while I say, you know what, I'm changing the game today, they get that game, no. Uh, I, I, I keep wondering if they'll let me Matrix one day and get out of the way, but they, they say no. <laughs> and um, how, how do you get it together on a daily basis? I, I am always so curious about that because some days you've got to be in a bad mood or you've got to be going through something terrible with your family, with your daughter, or whatever it is. Life gets in the way, and yet you're always Alexander Hamilton. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, the, the, the boring answer is it's my job, you know. <laughs> I have beautiful people all over the area have paid a lot of money <laughs> to come and see the show, so I, I think it, it's, it's my responsibility. But beyond that, you know, it, there, there's something pretty special about having this kind of an outlet, you know, for emotions. If I'm in a very, if I'm in a great mood, I get to yell my shot and go and just get out there and, and jam. If I'm not in a great mood, then I have Quiet Uptown or or um, uh, the, when the John, Lawrence, John Lawrence's death and these, these, these somber times that I get to sort of 
you know, reflect in the in the mind of Am Alexander Hamilton, but Miguel's in there too a little bit, and I get to sort of express my emotion so I can use it to really focus one or another part of the show, um, and, and it, it changes my performance, so that, that show is gonna be a little different than the one yesterday based on my my you know my emotional state at the time. So people should just see the show like once a week. I mean, listen. <laughs> yeah, so tickets are so easy to get. Yeah. Just run out, grab a ticket. You know, whatever. Just go out there and grab a ticket. No problem, right? You're, listen, you're in. Exactly. You're in the most popular uh, theater production ever. Yet, I imagine for the most part, you're fairly anonymous. Do you get recognized a lot now when you walk down the street here in Chicago? Uh, it, it happens more than I thought it would. Uh, where was it yesterday? I was at the. Um, I have the Target, and I'll go be you know, shopping and groceries. And <laughs> excuse me, uh, you know, could I, uh, uh, you know, upgrade? So, uh, which is which is pretty great, you know. Uh, you know, there's a there's something I always tell people. They say, oh, "I'm so sorry. Is it okay if I take a picture? I'm so sorry." I said, "Listen, when people stop asking for pictures, then it's going to be sad and annoying. Like, who's that guy? You know." So it's it's and it just is a show of, of how amazing and how how it touches people. It really affects a lot of people. And and do you know how long you'll stay? How long will Hamilton stay? Does it totally depend? On the tickets, I mean, yeah. you might be a hundred years old by the time Listen, the tickets slow I, down. I, I always say that they're going to have to drag my old <laughs> broken body out of here, out out of this show. Um, there's there's no there's no end date as of right now. You know, I think it all comes down to dollar signs. As long as there's people in the seats and and money being made, then um, they're going to stay around. And you know, they're they're cashing in while it's hot. There's going to be lots of there's another production starting the tour. Uh, another tour starting in October or at like December, and then another one starting uh, later on next year, and then another. I think that's going to be in San Francisco and London starting. So I mean, they are cash. They're cashing in on the Hamilton uh, craze, and you know it's well deserved because a lot of people want to see it, and they really should. And uh, do do you have anything to do with um, Lin Manuel on a regular basis? Lin Manuel uh, Miranda. He the, saw you. He just saw yeah. you here re yeah, at recently. Yeah, well, at the beginning he came in and uh, and he was he was there all the time. You know what was interesting about that? And I I asked the director very very early. I said, hey, you know, there's this hound, there's this soundtrack. And it's it's iconic, and people are listening to it over and over and over again. And here comes me, you know, this guy. I'm not <laughs> Lin Manuel. And I said, how much of that are you going to need from me? How much of that do you need to recreate? And he said, none. I don't want any of that because that's his version. That's what he does. And you know, uh, I got to do what I did. So he was a little bit of hands off and in sort of really, you know molding the Hamilton that I could be, and he was more interested in sort of the overall arc of the show and the feel and, and, and how it affected the, the words and the story. So it was, it was, it was nice because he's pretty great. Sir Hadid Marciano with Miguel Cervantes, Alexander Hamilton in Broadway and Chicago's Hamilton. We'll take a break and then when we come back, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the song you're going to do for us and also Cure, Citizens United for Research in Epilepsy and the very personal uh, journey you're on with your family. More to come here at WLS AM 890 from the Sound Lounge. <laughs> live <laughs> we We're have a studio shooting. audience uh, today for the Surratt Marciano after show with the star of Chicago's Hamilton Miguel Cervantes and let's take a look at those signs one more time because these people were so sweet amazing Hamilton is my Jamilton I hey. love that yeah blow us all away I love that before we, uh, oh, I love that. Thank you. That's awesome. Before That's we awesome. give everybody a chance to uh, get up close and personal and mingle with uh, Miguel after we're off the air, we want to talk a little bit uh, on the air here about what you're doing in regards to epilepsy. Tell the story about how it has affected your family, Miguel. Um, in uh, May of last year, uh, right as we were, you know, my daughter was born, and there was our, we knew something was happening. Uh, we knew something was quite not quite. Uh, Right, with her development, um, but we didn't have any idea of sort of the, the scope of it. And then around May, I started auditioning for Hamilton. So this was sort of happening in, in, in my life at the same time as we were trying to figure out with my daughter. And then around the third week of May, uh, she had her first seizure. Um, and we realized, you know, the word epilepsy came into our life when we were uh, dealing with this, the doctors. And so, you know, I'm, I'm auditioning for this, this uh, life-changing, uh, unbelievable uh, uh, show. And at the same time, terrified and worried about my daughter and, and finding out about uh, her, she, she was diagnosed with a thing called infantile spasms, which is a pretty pretty serious form of epilepsy. And then so now we're learning a lot more about epilepsy. And, and my wife had worked with uh, 
the Cure folks in New York for fundraisers there, so she just happened to know that they were in Chicago. So when we moved here, we got in touch with David and Susan Axelrod, who started uh, Cure, uh, Citizens United for Research in Epilepsy, and this is where they're, they're based, because their daughter, when they, were, when they were younger and she was younger, had epilepsy and the doctors couldn't help. They didn't know how to help. It was all a trial and error type thing. And we, she wondered, Susan, why there isn't more treatment? Why isn't there more uh, 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 fixes? Why, why isn't there a cure for this? You know, it's just as serious as Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, and it, and it affects children. You know, it, it can re it can really affect their development. And so that's what their motto is. And they said, let's let's find a cure. And we uh, happily jumped on board with them uh, since we've been here. How old was your daughter at the time when this happened, and how is she doing now? She was seven months old um, when that when it all started getting really serious. And um, you know, epilepsy is a, it's a tough it's a tough thing to 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 really wrap your head around because it changes every ch kid, every person. It affects differently. Um, and it can it can show up in really you know violent seizures. It can show up in really small things, and it affects development in different ways. Her development is pretty pretty severely um, uh, affected, and you know it goes month to month, day to day. Uh, you know we're we're in a we're in hopefully a time of, of development right now in progress. Uh, you know we we just stay hopeful. We stay hopeful. We'll take little baby steps. So any little smile, any little progress we'll take is we can take. And you know we just we keep working, and and, and hope hope always, uh, you know is the driving factor. You know. And what kind of progress has there been? Has there been progress in finding a cure for it? I mean, th there's always new drugs and there's new there's new uh, treatments, but really, to get in the brain is just such a complex thing, and and the doctors just need more tools. It hasn't been enough progress this day and age when they can get in there and and zap out things with lasers. <laughs> you know, our medical our medical uh, advancements are so high for them not to know when, when a doctor says to me, I, you know, I'm not sure what this is or I'm not sure how to help you fix this. We're going to try a bunch of things. It's not the greatest. So, there, you know, I, there just needs to be more. It just needs to be a, a more in, in the forefront of people's minds. Just like, you know, it needs to be one of the one in 26 people are affected by epilepsy. And, and that's just too many people to not have real, real treatments and and uh, and you know hope for a cure you know there's something like three million people in this country yeah. is that the number yeah yeah three million people are affected and, to, and and the way that it affects children is the most devastating because it affects you know their development and growing and and, and learning and and becoming you know uh what they could be so and that's that's the worst part about it is to not know what's going to happen and and not have the tools to be able to fix um it for her so Tell us a little bit about the song that we're going to hear and your inspiration for that. Obviously, your daughter, her situation, but tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, my uh, I was in last year and last April. We I was approached by a, a man named Ira Antelis, who as uh, kind of a songwriter. I said, "Have you ever written songs?" And I said, uh, "Not really." <laughs> he said, "Well, let's try one." And I said, "Well, I have this thing that I was thinking about. I had to do a, a gala for Cure for their big gala last year, and we wrote this song, and it came out." Uh, really quickly, I, I said, wow, if songwriting is this easy, <laughs> I'll do it all the time. <laughs> um, and, and we wrote it and we put it up on iTunes and all the proceeds go to Cure. We said we're going to give it to them and download the song for the money is great. Money is always a great thing, but the awareness. I just want people to, to get out there and, and hear that the struggle is real and it's it's universal. And, and as a parent, to be able to put the, my, my emotions into a song so that other folks, all, I've, been re, I've been contacted by people all over the world saying, you know, thank you for this, thank you for sharing your story and, and sharing that epilepsy is, is a thing and it's a big thing and it needs to be, it needs to be uh, uh, you know, really, really thought about. That guitar in the corner here is not for me, right? You're going to use that now. Well, I won't. Yes, not for this one. This, <laughs> this, I will use that maybe a little bit later. But, but the, we, we, a bunch of my uh, cast members from Hamilton came into the studio with me and recorded this track with me. And so, any voices that you hear that are not mine are folks from my show uh, in this song. So we, it's out on iTunes right now. It's called called Till the Calm Comes, and you can grab it and uh, iTunes it and and all the, all the or whatever whatever venue you, or <laughs> method you get songs these days. Um, and all the cure proceeds go to the Cure and and spread it around. Here comes a live sample. Till the calm comes, he plays Alexander Hamilton and Broadway in Chicago's Hamilton. Miguel Cervantes. <clears throat> I, 
I have only one heart and that is the part that makes Either tears from a smile or ripped out by pain And no, the sting it feels the same Like the trails left on my face And there's no way to know which way the wind blows today I am only as strong as I seem But that's enough for me to stay on my feet and say I'll be here with my sword and my cape I'll fight off these fears and before it's too late I'll make them disappear and if the sky is too dark we'll light up a spark and blow away the haze so you can clearly see my face and know right here is where I will remain Till the cough comes oh, 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 oh. I, I am calling your name and trying to follow your gaze Find the hint of a smile to know you're okay It's so hard to hide my hate But I'm trying baby wait I am only as strong as I seem But that's enough for me to stay on my feet And say I'll be here With my sword and my cape I'll fight off these fears And before it's too late I'll make them disappear I'll take your hand so you know I'm not letting go I need you to know that you're stronger than me My head's underneath all these stormy seas My thoughts turn to you and I'll stand and breathe La 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 You know I'll be here my sword and my cape will fight off these fears And before it's too late, I'll be here And if the sky is too dark, we'll light up a spark and blow away the haze So you can clearly see my face And know right here is where I will remain Till the call comes oh. That you can see right here is where I'll be thank you what a treat what a treat for our after show sound lounge audience Miguel Cervantes who plays Alexander Hamilton here in Chicago till the calm Comes. That's a goose bumper, my friend. <laughs> and I think you've got a future, young man. Yeah, well, <laughs> and you called that easy. Yeah, well, uh, easy, you know, easy when, you, when you have something really important to write about, I think that's when, it, when, so, when something like that comes out. So I, uh, I was happy to have an outlet like that for this song. So. And again, we hope that your daughter enjoys this. And uh, do you sing it to her? I do, I do. Yeah. I, I've gotten some uh, Facebook videos, which is pretty spectacular. It's pretty hard to watch, but some families have said, hey, watch my child listen to your song. And my voice starts singing and they smile Aww. and and they laugh. And, and I, I, I didn't realize that that was what I was doing. You know, I didn't, I didn't know. And but, again, the song is available online uh, everywhere. Uh, if Miguel's <laughs> walking down Michigan Avenue, he probably has a copy of it in his uh, <laughs> coat. Uh, Till the Calm Comes. For our after show uh, group here, we're going to get a chance to talk a little bit more with Miguel Cervantes. For everybody else, thanks so much for listening. Rush is coming up next, and we will see you tomorrow morning at 10. Have a great day, and uh, goodbye for Facebook Live as well. 
We'll Thanks see you so tomorrow. much, everybody. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Wow. And okay. That's so you guys stay put. We're going to take some pictures. Uh, we're going to talk, uh, mention some say some obscene words since we're not <laughs> not on the radio anymore and really the fun will begin in a minute. I had to rethink my answer. Normally I always say they're going to have to drive, drag my old tired ass out of here. I was uh, <laughs> oh, I mean, we got to we got to hold on. I this think is you could say it though. <laughs> uh, how how about that? What a great song. That was fantastic. That was and the that backing track is outstanding yeah, I mean that that my cast has been such amazing people Tremendous. to come out and and just be part of it and be willing to jump into stuff like that and And it's amazing that you have gotten this done all that all of this has happened since May. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. like finding out about it from the get-go and yeah. here it is yeah, it's not been a, It's been a crazy year. It's, it's been, been a really a crazy unbelievable year. year but yeah. You know, we, well, why don't uh, we take advantage of this time, uh, Miguel, if you can hang in for a few minutes sure, here. Sure, of course. And if anybody has any questions uh, for uh, Alexander Hamilton, uh, I'm sure Miguel will be happy to answer them. And then we'll take a few minutes for pictures and so forth and so on. This is your fan club right here, by the way. I love it. I, want I think they all signs. are. I like those signs. Yeah. You have a question? <laughs> yeah. You're just stretching? Nothing. Oh, one, oh, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, I remember when I used to hear the soundtrack, um, like like all the other folks in the world, you know, and, and when Obedient Servant would start, it was so cool, and I'd have such a good time on stage with that song, but it was, I was like, oh, that's such a cool song, that's such a cool show, and, you know, and so whenever that starts, I always remember thinking back um, to when I would hear that song, and, uh, you know, my favorite song on stage changes from day to day, you know, um, these days I really like Hurricane, I, I really like singing Hurricane, um, the way that it sort of, Feels and it's so dark and the lights and the and I can sort of catch glimpses of the folks going around me, um, you know. Sometimes Yorktown is my jam, um, you know. And Theodosius, you know, sometimes um, gets really gets in there and and and, and takes a hold. Uh, so it does kind of change based on sort of my mindset that day. And, and uh, am I the only dope that keeps asking and thinking about how the hell you memorize this? <laughs> Listen, you know, the I, the the secret of this is that most of the words rhyme. <laughs> so it's it's actually Makes much it it's actually much easier to remember. But if you get off track, then it kind of goes uh, goes haywire. But you know you got to think of what rhymes with you know Socrates. <laughs> Has there been any uh, any good haywire moments yeah, in this run? I, I, I mine haven't you know knock on wood I haven't gone way off the, the off the off the uh, <laughs> off the map. Um, but you know most times if I lose something I just stop. So one time I said the first one big one was right in the first couple of weeks I said. Lord, show me how to say no to this. I'm supposed to no to this. <laughs> and Sam, Sam Ware, who was up there, she went. <laughs> and we were right on stage. And she looked at me and said, ah. And then I got back online. And then the other time I said, I imagine that so much it feels more like a memory. <laughs> If this is the end of me, at least I have a. I just, just I, so I just had to stop and, and get back into the next thing. But those those kind of things, sort of. And Ari the other day, uh, as Eliza um, went up in Bern, just went to on a different place, and you know we're all backstage and we we're you know accustomed to hearing it you know a certain way. So you know you backstage and you go. <clears throat> <laughs> did she well, really she say that? Did yeah. she just say that? Yeah. Has she always said that? Did I? And then she comes off stage. Says, oh, I can't believe I did that. I said I didn't even notice. I just heard a, heard a weird word that I don't normally hear. Um, but, you know, little stuff like that. You know, sort of keeps yeah. keeps you on edge. You know, makes sure. And, you know, that like like what you were saying earlier. There's times when I go on stage, and if my mind wanders at all. You know, if something catches my eye, or, or I think of something that is not having to do with the show, and then all of a sudden I just say, "Did I just say the right word?" Is Did that something that happens often? Yeah, that you, you know, what, what <laughs> will catch your eye? For example, is it the audience? Yeah, sometimes or? you know, if I look down at the audience and I see somebody like I'm messing on their phone or look, <laughs> and looking down at, looking, I'm up there giving, and I, what are you doing? I'm right here, you know. And the, <laughs> The, you know, those little things like that can sort of sidetrack. I try not to because, uh, you know, I can't really see the audience much past the first couple rows, but I use the down angles as focus points. And so sometimes I'll catch an eye or I'll catch a pro I try not to. I try to use the, the aisles or a light or something out there. But every once in a while, I'll catch an eye. And if I catch an eye that's just 
you know, or sleeping, sleeping. I was like, Sleeping's you, worse, how right? Are you sleeping right now? <laughs> and I think about, oh, how, I wonder how much they paid for that ticket. I mean, that ticket was expensive. And I never even sleeping. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, did I just say the right? You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, sort of the train of thought goes off, off the, yeah. off the, off the wire. I, I have a question. I'm asking myself now, after being in radio and TV more than 40 years, I'm thinking, how come still to this day? Uh, I ask the best questions and get the best answers off the air. When the show's <laughs> over, why does that happen still to me? Well, you warm him up, you know. Yeah, right now. It's a... gets... <laughs> Anybody else? Uh... In the back over there. Yes. I have not. Oh, I have not. Story. That's great. I don't want to go check that out. That's, I mean, you know, we, I've been here for a year and, you know, with my daughter and with the show, it's hard to sort of get out and go see stuff, you know, and so when so, I have Sundays and Mondays off, so it's just spending time with my family, but I don't want it to get three years from here, here from now, if we're here that long, you, will. you know, uh, if we're here and all of a sudden I said, I mean, I didn't see anything. <laughs> I hear this is a great town. Um, That's pretty so cool. I need to go, I need to go see some How stuff How many like shows that. a week do you do? I do seven. So, seven. so Tuesday, you have a day off? Two, yeah, and they give me Sunday. Sundays off. There's one show on Sunday, and Joseph is the other Hamilton. He does, he does the Sunday show. Just so they don't want to blow. It's better to save me from blowing out my voice. Um, so they give me one day, one show off. So it's a nice. When we're done here and people are coming up to you and shaking your hands, you want me to pour Purell on everybody nah, before listen, they come up to you? I have a five-year-old and a and a two-year-old. Like I'm just oh, covered in. There's I'm I, immune. And you know, I'm not. I'm the only person. Not uh, that's. I'm very. It's very. Um, it's very, uh, uh, I, I don't know what it is. I have superpowers or something, but I have not called out sick except for twice. I've only missed two wow. shows keep that were not way. on the, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, way. I gotta just say it because if I don't care, you know, it's, yeah. if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, so. <laughs> <Right>. <clears throat> uh, what was the hardest song you learned? The, the, uh, the George Washington speech hmm. in, uh, though in reviewing the incidents of my administration, I am unconscious of intentional error. Why? It doesn't rhyme. Oh. <laughs> when I got the job, uh, my, I had that, that book. I didn't have the script yet, but I had that book, the Hamilton Revolution book, that big book. And I opened up to that because it, I just was like, that's the only thing that doesn't rhyme. I have to learn it as prose. And it took me forever. Did you read the book? I start, I did. I wrote, I, wrote, I read a lot of it. And then I met Ron Chernow and I said, bro, this thing is long. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and I, I got, really I, long. I got through there and, but it was cool to read it after I had sort of learned the show and I was learning stuff and hearing the show because I was like, oh, that's what that is. That's where he did that. Oh, that's how that. That's how he sort of massaged that moment into a thing in the show. So it was really cool to sort of see how this guy read this book and and created this thing hmm. out of out of all. It was. It's just. It's intense. It's so it's so intense. Uh, yeah, you know, I I I loved theater, and I that's what I I went in. I I took every opportunity that I could as a kid to sort of to sort of you know enhance that 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 love of performing. You know, I was always the kid who jumped up on when the teacher wanted a someone to read a poem or or sing a song. I was the kid that jumped up, and so my mom said, "Hey, well, why don't we go do this sh show?" And realized that that was kind of something that 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 a good outlet for that. And then you just work, 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 and, and you understand that no doesn't mean you're terrible. No just means that that's no for now. And so, you know, I'm, I'm 40 years old now, and I started when I was 18. So I've done a couple cool things, you know, uh, but nothing of any sort of like this magnitude. So, you know, it took me a while. So opportunity, I always tell people this, opportunity comes on its own schedule. It's not on anyone's, there's no schedule or correct timetable when opportunity comes. It just have to be ready. You have to be ready and, and prepared when, when, it, when it does come. And, and hope that, that you're the right height, you know, <laughs> hair color, you know, whatever, the right voice quality. It, it all, it all is just, the, it's, it's such a, such a crapshoot. And I happen to be the riding the unicorn that got hit by lightning when, <laughs> when they needed somebody. You know. uh -huh. <clears throat> Time for one or two more. Yeah, I went to Emerson College in Boston. I'm a musical theater major, and did a, did a lot of cool stuff. And then, uh, and then, what I would, what I would also say is, when you're finished in college, does not mean you're finished training. You know, go and do the next things. Follow, follow the, the with the voice and the acting. It's not I, that was my problem. Is when I went to New York, I thought, hey, I got this. no 
problem. And then I didn't, you know, I didn't continue the, the journey. To, and um, so, and that's really important because like I said, if you're not ready when the opportunity comes because you've sort of, you know, left it to its own devices, then it's gonna, it, it, it'll fade like anything else. Yes. Ooh, hey. Person um, or character? Person or, or character? Like person. person? That's a great question. Um, you know, everybody is such a, a individual people. You know, that's what makes our show so great um, to sort of have all of these different um, uh, personalities that are that are are uh, intermingling to make this show. You know, from day to day, it's different. You know, I think some days I really enjoy Chris Lee because he, he sings, he's always singing, he's always backstage, yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh. he's always singing, just crazy singing. And then some days I have chat with like Montego Glover, she's the newest, she's our new Angelica, and we'll sit down and chat about our kids. And so, it, you know, I think the best part is that there's so many different personalities that, you know, and I'm not, I'm not a youngster anymore. I go home right after, so I don't go, I don't have a best friend in the, in the cast, you know, I don't go hang out. When I go doing the show, I sign autographs and I go home and go to sleep because my son wakes up at seven no matter what daddy did the night before <laughs> so th there's no going out and hanging out so you know I, I think I just appreciate how diverse everyone is and their viewpoints are so different that it, it, it changes you know it changes the the, the dynamic of us, us as a group on stage got one, uh, one more and then a sure. special treat for you so I know that <clears throat> <laughs> oh, but you are you are going to get a special song here, though. Oh. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Let me do one thing first. How much time do we have? Uh, we uh, we've got about six or seven hours for you, Miguel. <laughs> we'll, we'll do this first. This is my. I like to do this. We good here? Do you think I wasn't going to play this guitar, right? The show is so popular, if you just released that, it would be a right. million seller. <laughs> Dynamo of volition, a pole pole position, automatic transmission with no O emission. I'm a brand new addition to the old addition with the love and condition. Oh. Well, I'm a drama abolitionist, damn new opposition to my proposition. Half of a man, half magician, half a politician holding the mic like ammunition. And my vision is a symbol, it's like, ain't no reason we should be in a fight. No demolition, got a vote, got to say what you like. Well, creation compositions already written by themselves. Hank is for the people not believing in gosh. Good job, get them up a way high, give me, give me that high five. Good job, get them way down low, give me, give me that low dough. Good job, bring them back again, give me, give me that high ten. You're the best definition of good intention, no, no, no. Do not answer the call if I do not know who he's calling. Guess the whole point of it all is that we never know, do we? Trying to keep with the Joneses while waiting for guns and the roses to finish what we are supposed to. Can't you see that shit is silly? Oh, fist like bumping a wrist like twisting up a Rizla. Get Icarus on the transistor. Nintendo been giving me a blister. I'll bend over, take it in the kisser. My best friend's been hitting on my sister. Try to tell them that they need a wisher. Cause she already got herself a Mr. And besides, it's gross to want to diss her. Didn't I say, didn't I say? Good job. Get them up away high. Give me, give me that high five. Good job. Get them way down low. Give me, give me that low dough. Good job. Get them back again. Give me, give me that high ten. You're the best definition of good versus evil. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Do not answer the call if do not know who is calling. I'm making no sense of it all. I said, can I get a witness? Only a boy in a story, just a hallucinatory. Tripping on nothing there is, living in a wilderness. With a spider fun on my back, living life of a cat. I just want to relax here and write another rap tune. Tripping off on your blind man's bike. You can say just what you like. Nothing can stop you. Oh, no, no, no. I am not throwing away my shot. 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 Hey yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot. I imagine death so much it feels more like a memory. When's it gonna get me in my sleep? Seven feet ahead of me. If I see it coming, do I run or do I let it be? Is it like a beat without a melody? See, I never thought I'd live past 20. Where I come from, some get half as many. Ask anybody why we're living fast and we laugh, reach for a flask. We have to make this moment last. That's plenty. Scratch that, it's not a moment, it's a movement where all the hungriest brothers were something to prove when foes oppose us we take an honest stand we roll like Moses claiming our promised land and if we win our independence is that a guarantee of freedom for our descendants or will the blood we shed begin an endless cycle of vengeance and death with no defendants I know the action in the street is exciting but Jesus between all the bleeding and fighting I've been reading and writing we need to handle our financial situation are we a nation of states what's the state of our nation I'm past patiently waiting I'm passionately smashing every expectation every action is an act of creation I'm laughing in the face of casualties and sorrow for the first time I'm thinking past tomorrow <laughs> wow! Good job! Get him up and way high, gimme, give gimme give that high five! Good time! Get him way down low, gimme, give gimme give that low dough! Good job! Get him back again, gimme, give gimme give that high ten! You're the best definition of good intention, no, no, no! You're the best definition of good intention, no, no, no! You're the best definition of good intention, no, 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 no! You're the best around, no, 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 no! You know, I do the show, I say 26,000 words every night, right? That's how many words. And then I come and do cool things like this, and I pick a song that I say 26,000 words <laughs> in a do song. Do you speak at home? I'd no, yeah, right? <laughs> like I said, my son doesn't care. All right, I'm going to do something. I wasn't going to do this, but I think I'm going to do it real quick. I need a volunteer. Who thinks... Uh-oh, look at it. I, I, I could have told you that. Who thinks they know the words... To Hamilton. All right, she's up high. You gotta come over here. All right, you're right there. Right there. All right. All right, everybody, come on. So you don't even need this. I'm gonna use this, and you use that, right? Right. You just stand. Stand right, stand right there. So everybody, stand like this. All right. See if you can figure it out. Right. Uh oh. Look around, look around at how lucky we are to be alive right now. Look around, look around at how lucky we are to be alive right now. Oh, 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 let me show you now. When I had you to myself, I didn't want you around. But those pretty faces always make you stand out in the crowd. Come on. But someone picked you from the bunch and one glance was all it took. Now it's much too late to sink a second girl. Come on, baby. Oh, baby, give me one more chance to show you how I love you. Won't you please let me? Oh, darling, I was blind to let you go. Let you go, baby. Now that I see you, it is on. I want you back. Ooh, ooh, baby. Oh, oh, darling. No, 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 no. No, 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 learning to live without you, girl It's like a one long sleepless night Let me show you, girl, that I know wrong from right Every street I walk on, baby, I leave tear stains on the ground Following the girl, I didn't even want around Woo! There's nothing like summer in the city Someone in a rush next to someone looking pretty Excuse me, miss, I know it's not funny But your perfume smells like your daddy's got money While you summer in the city in your fancy heels You searching for a urchin who can give you ideals? Why are you disgusting? So you disgust me? Well, I'm a trust fund <laughs> 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 
Before you just go out of the <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> so you disgust me? Wait, no, wait, oh, wait. <laughs> oh, why you someone in the city in your fancy heels? You searching for a nurture who could give you ideals? Oh, you disgust me. Well, I'm a trust fund, baby. You can trust me. Look around, look around at how lucky we are to be alive right now. Look around, look around at how lucky we are to be alive right Oh, baby, give me one more chance to show you how I love you. Won't you please let me back in your heart? Oh, darling, I was blind to let you go. Now that I see you, it is all. I want you back. Not that long ago, right? Yeah, September 15th. All right, that's awesome. Well, that was awesome. We want to we want to thank uh, Miguel Cervantes and uh, the Jackson Five. The Jackson Five. <laughs> and, and and how great! Also, I mean, I was thinking here. You know, we do our two-hour ten to noon show every day here, and and then if somebody said, uh, "Hey, why don't you guys come uh, and uh, go to a little studio and do your show again today? And we would say, no, 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 once is enough. And I'm thinking about you uh, <laughs> doing know. your show so and nice coming here you. for us today. And uh, it, it was so much fun, such a treat for all of us. Uh, the music is great. And again, that song, Till the Calm Comes, we're all going to get that. But thanks so much to Miguel Cervantes. Thank you so much. Thank you.